Magic might be attracting magic. Shenanigans activity out here may be luring in other magical creatures. That Brian, what a jerk. As usual, he got some things right and some things wrong. Should I be worried about this new neighbor? It's story time here at Ivy Acres Homestead. It's an amazing discovery, and I just had to bring my camera down here to document it. I found it down here in the ravine, near a mound I was working on in a previous video. Obviously, it's a chair, but whose chair is it? I asked Shenanigan, our friendly forest fairy, if it was hers. I didn't think it was. If Shenanigan needed furniture, I'm sure she'd just use magic to create a much more refined and elegant piece. This one is crudely fashioned, rustic, simple and earthy. It's not Shenanigans. She says we have a troll in the area, a real troll, not an internet one. Evidently, He's kind of creepy and makes Shenanigan a little uncomfortable. Let's infer a few things based on the appearance of our little chair. I'm assuming our chair maker is a youngish, unattached male because there was just the one chair, not a grouping. Magical beings of different species do behave differently. Trolls probably reserve the use of their magic for less trivial and mundane purposes. He probably made this himself by hand out of materials nearby. Maybe the earthy aesthetic is related to his source of magic, whereas fairies recharge their magic by dancing in magical places at magical times, basking in what they call good light. Trolls literally go to ground. Their source of magic is the good earth. Surrounding himself with natural things of the earth just makes sense. Magic might be attracting magic. Shenanigans activity out here may be luring in other magical creatures. I thought trolls lived under bridges. So why is this guy here and not under one of our downtown bridges? Well, just look at this place. A gentle creek, overhead tree canopy, we're sheltered in a steep ravine. This has got to be one of the most beautiful spots, certainly within reasonable walking distance. Besides, just back over there we do have the tree bridge, and right here there's a few smaller fallen trees creating bridge-like structures. I haven't seen the troll. All I've seen is this odd little chair. Who made it? Why was it suddenly out in the open where I could come across it? Should I be worried about this new neighbor? It's story time here at Ivy Acres Homestead. This is written from the troll's perspective. That Brian what a jerk. As usual, he got some things right and some things wrong. I am the chair maker. We'll get to more about the chair in a little while. I'm not that new of a neighbor. I used to live closer to the golf course, 
But since they've been building those new townhouses, I skedaddled this direction to get a little peace and quiet. Brian is right about this place being a peaceful, private location, and Shenanigans Magic does create a nice background hum of magic energy. But really, it's Shenanigan herself that is the real draw. She is a real hottie. I don't know what she sees in Brian. Maybe girls just go for that tall, good-looking sort of thing. I do live alone, although I wouldn't mind playing house with that sweet little shenanigan. The whole bridge thing is a misunderstanding that stems from a simple fact. When you are as short as a troll, it's good to be able to duck under something. You don't want a bird swooping down and carrying you off somewhere that'll take you half a day to walk back from. I'm not worried about those small little songbirds that flit around here and there. It's the really big screeching ones that you have to watch out for. Before you ask me my name, I'm not going to tell you. Trolls have a thing about revealing our true names. Some people think trolls hoard treasure in secret caves. This isn't true. Our secret caves are the treasure we crave. Brian was right about earth magic sustaining us. Good earth goes all the way back to when God caused dry land to appear, called it earth, and saw that it was good. We don't dance around to replenish our magic, but fairies do. Our batteries, if you like, recharge a little slower. The magic for us just seeps up from the ground, and some places have a little more magic to work with than others. I do have to give Brian some credit here. He has created a nice little oasis for magic. Earth magic is intensified by living things in harmonious balance. Invasive species that strangle everything really diminishes it. Getting rid of the invasive ivy and blackberry bushes made this place a top-notch home site. I've been keeping an eye on his progress for about four years now. When those townhouses started going up not too long ago, I knew right where I was going to be moving. I just wish Brian wasn't working down here so much. I have to hide every time I see him coming. Sure, we're invisible just like fairies, unless we want to be seen, but you'd probably hide too if some strange giant came lumbering around a little too close for comfort. Just the other day, Brian was digging with a shovel into the roof of my house. Of all of the invasive species out here, blackberry bushes are my number one enemy, and there's one growing with impunity right on that mound. I really like this landform, and I've got some trees growing on and around it so that their tree roots will eventually help stabilize the area. I don't want to cause any extra erosion that isn't necessary, but the only way to get rid of blackberries is to dig them out by the roots. So that's what I'm going to have to do. Since I removed the ivy out here, there have been some volunteer plants springing up in its place. I'm going to have to be careful not to crush the trillium or the maidenhair ferns. Why is it that humans always think that plants they didn't plant themselves are volunteers? I planted those trillium and maidenhair ferns to spruce the place up and provide some trail camouflage. It's a darn good thing he didn't step on them. Mission accomplished. Mission accomplished indeed. I know he didn't intend to damage my home, but that's what happened. That's why my chair was out in the open. I had moved it out so I could repair the living room. 
Brian just happened to come along at the wrong time and saw it. What a mess. All this fuss over a simple chair. You don't see me going on and on about that plastic lawn chair he has by the creek. Should I just live and let live with this troll? I think I should be a little more neighborly than that. I've got an idea and I'll tell you about it up in my shop. I want this troll to be an ally, not an adversary. He may be small, but anyone who can wield magic is not the sort of person you want as an enemy. Besides, trolls can be tough hombres and really know how to hold a grudge. One thing to know about magical beings, they highly value the practice of gift giving. Think about it. What do you really need if you have magic? You'd need respect and acceptance. I think a strategic housewarming gift is in order here. Now when you give a gift to a magical being, they are profoundly compelled not just to take it, but to use it as well. My idea is to build our troll a second chair for a spouse and a cradle for what comes next. If he settles down into family life, he'll probably want a safe community to be a part of, and that means being on good terms with his neighbor. It should be fairly easy for me to replicate the chair the rustic look of the chair. First, I'll drill a hole right about here with a nice wide drill bit. Then I'll go in again from either end to meet up in the middle like a crossroads. At that point, it's just a couple of easy cuts to free out those legs and then create the seat and the chair back. This is a little taller than we need. I think I'll leave it long at the moment and then cut it down once I know about how tall I want the chair back to be. For the cradle, I've got another log piece here. I've got it set right on a piece of paper here so I can sketch out the end plate rocker sections. And those will be made out of a little scrap of a cedar fence board. Doesn't have to be perfect here. Just to make it symmetrical, I fold it over and then cut out one side. Let's see what that looks like. It seems a little bit wide to me, so we will just shorten it a little bit here. See if that's any better. Still a little bit wide.
That looks a little better to me. And I'll use a jigsaw to cut this out. The next one will be the same, just I'm going to extend the top a little bit higher, just so it looks like there's a headboard for the cradle. That first chair is gone. He must have taken it back into his dwelling. We'll just leave these housewarming gifts for him right here where it was. We'll go away and give him plenty of time to inspect them. They disappeared so clearly he's accepted the gifts. What I'll read next is an epilogue to our troll story. I was too hasty when I called Brian a jerk. I think he's all right. You know, the craftsmanship on these legs is even better than mine. I've been thinking about settling down and starting a family. I'll have to give shenanigan the good news the next time I see her. It's destiny. Shenanigan and I were meant for each other. <laughs>